getting this right to mute all ma'am let me make you as the host yes then only i can otherwise we will request because our audience are quite mature audience so they will do ma'am now you will have the right can you do it now yes yes i'll see no it is giving mute me only no ma'am please go to participant please yeah, to yeah, participant yeah. No, i i can i can no. mute all yes yes okay yeah yeah please please start priyanka so yes, welcome again to all of you and uh, ma'am still the mics are not muted i have done All the participants to please. Right. So now it is yes. So. I request to all to please keep your mics muted. Otherwise, it becomes difficult to share. And uh, please, uh, no disturbances from your side. I request the. ऑब्जेक्टिव विच वी है aiming for so uh, let us begin so you see if you talk about the internet of things ever since this term was coined back uh, in 1999 by kevin ashton who was working with proctor gamble and he was uh, making a presentation for rfid sensor when he coined this term uh, the internet of things existed actually way before that so the first evidence of internet of things uh, i request you all not to make the uh, request for the ppts as of now just the questions if you want to pose up those questions can be entertained regarding the ppts we'll share all the information at the later stages so you see this iot existed way before that some even uh, somewhere in 1980s the first evidence has been found when the local programmers from the dale carnegie university carnegie mellon university they used the iot for accessing 
If a vending Coca Cola vending machine, they would connect. They would use the local internet to connect to the vending machine, and they would try to find out if the drink was available and if it was available, was it cold? So you see, ever since then, IoT has been used to make the things efficient, to make the things effective, to reduce the effort, and to achieve the overall efficiency. So we have been doing, we have been using IoT ever since then. But if we want to put over the formal definition of Internet of Things, Nilayasar will again put it, but I will go ahead with the uh, definition which has been present. There are many prevalent definitions of IoT. I will go ahead with the definition of IoT which has been presented by uh, IEEE. As per the IEEE, Internet of Things is a network which connects the uniquely identifiable things via sensors and actuators and the specialty is that these things can be accessed anytime, anywhere. So you see, you have some unique features. One is that the things are uniquely identifiable. So they all have a unique identification number. Like you have your Aadhaar card. You can you, you just have a single, everybody has a single Aadhaar card number and all the information which are relevant to him can be accessed using that Aadhaar card. So these things have a unique identification number. They are connected via sensors and actuators. They are connected via sensors and actuators and they can be accessed anytime, anywhere. Ubiquity, access to information anytime, anywhere is the essential feature of Internet of Things. So this is the formal definition of Internet of Things. With this background, let us start. So this Internet of Things can be used to make the grid smarter. Now, if we talk about the grid, it is the largest interconnected machine on the earth. It is so massively con complex and so inextricably linked to the human behavior that it can be appropriately called as an ecosystem. So if we can work on making this machine smarter, this would serve as an engine to give a boost to our economy, to our environment and to our future as well. And before we begin, what is a smart grid? I'm just uh, going to put up a brief definition and then we can go ahead as we move ahead with the presentation. You will see that we will go ahead with the different features of the smart grid and how IoT can be useful to make the grid smarter. So you have this conventional grid. You impart some amount of computational intelligence to it. You impart some amount of networking abilities to it. And what you get is a smart grid. So even if we discuss in general, general what makes a person smarter? A person becomes, we say that a person is smart if he's able to communicate well, if he's able to communicate well, and if he's based upon that communication, he's able to come up with a decision which is justified enough. So even a smart grid has the ability to talk and listen. It can talk with its fellow uh, partners, fellow grids, and it can take the appropriate action. It can go into the automation mode and it can take the appropriate controlling action. So this is a smart grid. So putting up the formal definition, this is an electricity network, which intelligently, this work is this word is important, intelligently. It not only integrates, but it intelligently integrates the actions of all users, generators, consumers, prosumers. You see that you're already aware with what are, what are generators and what are consumers. This prosumer is a new term. Prosumer is a new term which has come up in the smart grid environment. Prosumer is someone who is the producer of electricity as well as the consumer of electricity, and that is why he becomes a prosumer. So you see, if I install, uh, let us say, a photovoltaic panel on my rooftop, and if I wish to connect, to feed this power when I'm not using it to the grid so that my bill can be minimized, I become a prosumer so that I can consume and I can produce the electricity as well. So you have this electricity infrastructure, and then you have this information infrastructure, and then what we get is a smart grid. So this electricity infrastructure, this belongs to electrical people. Information infrastructure is being facilitated by electronics and computer science and IT people. So we want an integration of all these branches to come up with a network which is so intelligent and so uh, 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 being able to relate with us that it can deliver us very efficiently. Now, the question is, my grid was running fine. Why did we want to go for the smart grid at all? why we wanted to approach the smart grid infrastructure. So there are various reasons for it. One is aging infrastructure. Now you just try and understand this. Uh, let us say that we have around 130 participants and imagine that if we are sitting in a hall and if Alexander Graham Bell walks in into this hall, he would be astonished to see the modern devices of telephony. 
you have the mobile phones you have the skype you have laptops you are you're communicating through uh, whatsapp you have been communicating through now the cisco webex so he would be astonished to see the modern devices of telephony but let us say that if thomas edison walks in he would not find any change same grid same wire same transformers uh, same kind of structure we still have that still persists but what he had actually started with so our infrastructure has aged enough and this infrastructure needs substantial upgradation and when we are going for an upgradation why not to go for a smarter infrastructure so that it can be it is sustainable for a longer interval of time so that is one of the important driver for smart grid the next is renewable energy integration now i would like to assert upon this if we talk about the renewable energy integration if we talk about the scenario in india itself in 2010 we had somewhat somewhere around 1 gigawatt of solar pv capacity integrated to the grid now the ministry of new and renewable energy is proud to flaunt that we wish to add add 175 gigawatts by 2022 out of which 100 gigawatt is to come from solar 60 giga gigawatt has to come from from wind 10 gigawatts from uh, small and mini hydro and 5 gigawatts from biomass not only that the ministry wants to take it further to the addition of 450 gigawatts to a total of 450 gigawatts by 2030 we have the total installed capacity in india as of now is 370 gigawatts we want 450 gigawatts by 2030 so you see the reliability reliability is definitely the market nature some of you can recall uh, i'm sure that was in 2000 what had actually happened this is described as the worst power outage in the history of the power industry by the number of the people who were affected uh, now uh, mr ramesh is asking me what is the i will keep on taking the questions in between what is the difference between auto automation and smart grid uh, ramesh ji automation is actually a part of smart grid infrastructure only as you will see later so you see we were talking about reliability at that point of time what had actually happened we had this uh, bina gwalior breaker 400 kb breaker and this was feeding in to uh, this this breaker failed and this was feeding into the agra bareilly transmission line which was again 400 kb so that also failed now because both these breakers failed there was a cascaded reaction and very soon 32 gigawatts of capacity was withdrawn the repercussions were large enough for two days 22 out of 29 states were out of power we didn't have any power uh, especially the northern six states were affected delhi metro came to call the disaster management team had to be called to open the gates and evacuate the passengers the busiest airport in south asia that is delhi airport was without power however the power was restored in a very short while since the gmr group is that is a private group is managing it 200 miners were stuck in the mines uh, and because the lifts were not working the water filtering stations were not working the water pumping motors were not working and we had a disastrous condition that we had experienced at that time at that time the us agency for institutional development usaid they had suggested that if instead of having an integrated grid which we had at that time if the system had uh, micro grids were in, which were integrated to a smart grid infrastructure the situation would not have been that bad and that is why from that point of time the smart grid was seen as a solution to uh, improve the reliability of the system now next is the environmental concerns the environmental concerns is one of is, is one of uh, the top list uh, uh, conditions in the majority of countries uh, we were working very largely on nuclear power plants as well but after ever since the fukushima happened in 2011 they have been hugely concerns about the power which we have been generating from the sources which are causing environmental hazards with the nuclear power stations you see not only that there are the hazards of the accidents but the hazards are also associated with the health and the environmental hazards associated with the uranium mining and that is why all these have to be given due consideration new types of load now this is something which is very interesting we have the new types of loads coming up in the grid what are the new types of loads i will just name one load which you would be able to relate with 
and uh, uh, we have been the market has been talking about it uh, lately very often and that is the electric vehicles nitin kadkari had already stated that uh, by 2030 we will start phasing out the diesel and petrol based vehicles and we would be relying more upon the electric vehicles uh, we have two lecture schedule on the electric vehicles later on you will see that and we will be discussing much more on this uh, but these electric vehicles you see they are a very typical type of loads because they are battery operated and this battery it poses up as a load when it is in the charging mode and it poses up as the source when it is in the discharging mode so the point of interconnection with this load to the grid becomes uh, very uh, i mean like impactful because the voltage and frequency at the point of interconnection can be largely affected and that is why we have to accommodate to accommodate these type of loads in the smart grid infrastructure it requires additional concern sorry so having seen what is the basic definition of iot and what is the basic smart grid that we are talking about let us now see how iot can actually facilitate smart grid i'm just categorizing my discussion into three categories iot gateways in home and industrial grid systems iot gateways in transmission and distribution that is utility companies and ami and smart meters so we'll first talk about the iot gateways in home and industrial grid systems so iot gateways enable a wide range of connectivity to home area network or building area network protocols like zigbee bluetooth wifi lan what is a gateway uh, i'm just trying to reach out to all electrical people out there who are not aware with what it actually a gateway is so uh, some uh, amrita ji is asking what is the future grid technology like amrita ji we will discuss this in detail later so we were discussing about a gateway so this gateway this can be a physical hardware or a software which provides the connectivity between the device the cloud the controller and the sensors so this is basically serving as the point of interconnection between all these things now this inter interconnect this connectivity can be obtained through a range of wifi technologies like zigbee bluetooth wifi now what a uh, kind of wifi technology that i should be opting for that is again a question of concern because not only we have large variety of wifi wifi technology available also it is also a moving target since we have every day we are coming up with a new kind of technology so i should choose basically based upon what my requirement is let us see that if uh, i have to connect two devices which are just 10 meters apart and uh, the data transmission required is very less uh very amount of data is required to be transmitted then i might not go for a very high speed wifi i would rather a bluetooth can serve the purpose so based upon what is my specific requirement i can go for a specific type of technology i can also go for peer to peer or many to many connection let us say that uh, let me give you an example let us say that we have uh, uh 26 devices a b c d e f g h i am naming them them by alphabets so a to z there are 26 devices sitting and each device let us say is sitting about 100 meters apart so if i want a to communicate with z i need a connection i need a wireless connectivity which can transmit data about 2600 meters apart but instead if i go for a kind of connection so that a communicates to b b transmits to c c to d and then accordingly so on and that is how the data is being transmitted to z what will i need i just need the 100 meter connectivity so that substantially reduces upon the cost however it does the timing definitely increases so based upon what is my requirement and what is my priority i should be choosing my kind of uh, wireless connectivity the next is the devices or sensor that can connect to the gateway which in turn connects to the cloud now these devices and sensors they form the backbone of the smart grid infrastructure because unless until i have the efficient sensing technology i will not be able to access the data and then how if i don't have the access to the right kind of data this cannot be processed and the appropriate controlling action cannot be taken and that is why uh, this is something which is elementary This allows the user to access the sensor data remotely through their mobile devices from any location at any time remember when we were discussing about the definition of iot i said ubiquity any time anywhere so this is uh, what the ubiquity is like so we have discussed the role of uh, iot gateways 
in home and industrial systems. Now, let us see the role of IoT gateways in distribution and utility companies. Now, this provides utility companies with a broader view of energy distribution patterns. We should clearly understand that once we have the data, which is coming to me via sensor, and that data is being gathered on the cloud, you see that there is a lot which the utility company can uh, uh, do with it. Once I have the analysis of the energy distribution patterns, the utility companies can analyze the data and they can find out what are the peaks, what are the valleys. So based upon that, the redundancy of the system can be planned. Based upon that, the efficiency of the system can be increased. So there's a lot which can be done once I have the energy distribution patterns with me. They can develop a demand response mechanism to optimize energy distribution based on consumption patterns. What we call as a time of use pricing. This will soon become a regular feature, the time of use pricing. Uh, I hope many of us would be able to relate if I discuss this example with you. If you can recall back uh, the era of uh, when we didn't have these mobile phones and we were rather using the STD, uh, you know, to communicate between the between different cities. You see, we had some pattern of the tariff. If I wanted to communicate uh, in the peak time, I was charged the full tariff. If I come, I wanted to talk after 7 p.m., I would be charged half. If I wanted to talk about uh, after 11 o'clock, I would be charged 25%. So based upon what is my time of use, I was uh, charged based upon that. So based upon the demand response program, uh, even the time of use pricing can be offered and this would be beneficial both to the utilities as well as to the consumers. Data analytics to predict peak load times and enable dynamic pricing options as we have just discussed. Collect energy data from the sources, that is wind, solar, which are generally variable. Now, this is something which you should uh, very clearly understand, and this uh, forms a very prospective area of research. Uh, as we have discussed the renewable energy integration, you see this is the problem which comes up with the renewable energy integration. This is not like conventional generation, which is always available. The sun may not always shine. The wind may not always blow. And these sources are highly intermittent in nature. So I cannot predict... Uh, now, Rashmi Pandeji is asking, can we collect energy from the renewable energy sources? Yes, we have been doing that, of course. So, if I have to predict some amount of uh, output from these sources, I need to have the information beforehand. So, based upon that, I can the planning can be done. So, I can collect the data from the various sources. These data can be analyzed, they can be processed, and the forecasting can be done so that the output can be predicted in advance. So AMI and smart meters, this definitely requires a very large amount of discussion and we already have a dedicated lecture on it, uh, which, which, which would be based upon the advanced metering infrastructure. So I will not discuss this in detail, just to, uh, just to introduce you how this is a part of the uh, smart grid infrastructure. They have been playing very important role in energy management of a grid system. You see, even during this time, this in the, in the times of Corona, you must have heard that the utility companies have not been able to read the meters physically. So what they have been doing is that based upon the average bill or the billing which was prevalent in the last year, they have they are charging the consumers this time as well. So especially the business sector is facing problem because they haven't used electricity, but because of their previous bill. Because they have been charged on the basis of the historical bills, uh, this, this is coming into picture. So if we had these smart meters, this information could have been accessed remotely and uh, the charging could have been done on the real-time basis. So that is one advantage. So collect energy consumption data on real-time basis from the devices. This data can be analyzed to assess energy utilization of each device. So if, if I have the information, if I have access to this information that my drawing room air conditioner is consuming more power and my study room air conditioner is consuming lesser power, I would like to spend more of the time in the study rather, would, rather than spending it in the uh, drawing room so that my energy consumption can be minimized and I can optimize my electricity bill as well. So not only the utility is benefited, the consumer is also benefited. Users can access this, we already discussed, they can access historical data. And accordingly, they can optimize their consumption of energy. Now, what are the requirements at the smart grid and see, we have been building up a story. We discuss briefly what the IoT is. We discuss briefly what the smart grid is. We discussed why we require smart grid and what are the drivers. Now, for the grid to be ready to receive these devices, what are the requirements at the smart grid and that we have to discuss now. 
So one is the smart sensing technologies. I told you that without sensors, there is very little that we can do at the smart grid end. These sensors, they are the backbone for sensing the data. And unless until I have the reliable data available with me, I cannot go for the controlling actions. So you have the, for the smart grids, you need the smart sensors. Let us uh, briefly discuss what are the smart sensors. So, uh, I'm sorry. 